Shout out to our sponsor, Sherry's Berries. If you're in the US, Mother's Day is coming up quick and Sherry's Berries is offering huge freshly dipped strawberries for just $19.99 plus shipping. To get them, visit berries.com, click the microphone in the top right corner and use code THE NO so they know we sent you. Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. As if there was any room to doubt, Sony has finally announced the time and date of their big E3 press event. You can expect to get all the PlayStation details at the normal day and time, Monday, June 12th at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Unlike EA and Microsoft, who decided to flip the script on everybody and move to Saturday and Sunday, so, uh, you know, Mark those calendars, because we can probably expect loads more news about upcoming PlayStation exclusives, what they've got in for the rest of the year, and, well, there's a lot more time on Monday, so it'll, they'll have like a lot more room to breathe. In other E3 news, we've got a couple of other big announcements. First up, PC Gamer confirmed that they will be bringing back their PC gaming show to the event. That stream will start on the same day as Sony's, only at 10 a.m. Pacific. Once again, the PC gaming show will be hosted by Day9 and feature appearances by developers like Bohemia Interactive, Tripwire, Psy Games, and Nexon with new trailers and announcements specifically dedicated to PC. And to round out all the E3 coverage, friend of the know, Jeff Keighley, also unveiled a brand new addition to E3 this year with the newly announced E3 Coliseum. According to Keeley, Coliseum is going to be a two-day series of panels and surprises hosted by some of the industry's biggest publishers. So far, Activision, Bethesda, Gearbox, Sony Interactive Entertainment, Square Enix, Ubisoft, Warner Brothers, and Xbox are all confirmed for Coliseum, with more on the way. You'll be able to stream the panels online and even interact with questions via Facebook, so basically, E3 is just going to be more E3 than ever this year. Not to be left out of the conversation, it looks like Nintendo might have a little something up their sleeve heading into E3 as well. Some super sleuths at NeoGAF think they've uncovered some evidence that Nintendo is planning an, uh, as of yet, unannounced surprise Nintendo Direct, which may take place next week. The uh, evidence for the super secret Direct comes straight from Nintendo's listing of upcoming Japanese Directs. Gaffers screen capped the page this week, which had a sudden blank slot for an unannounced Direct next week. Apparently, the same thing happened before Nintendo announced some of their previous directs as well. The page no longer has the empty listing available, so we'll see if Nintendo does actually surprise us all with an announcement this week. Fingers crossed for, oh, uh, Pokemon Stars Direct? Anyone? Please? For Switch? Yes. Uh, with every new bit of information, we keep getting more and more sure that God of War is going to be out sometime before the end of 2017, but one Portuguese retailer may have let the actual date slip. Possibly. The retailer, Gaming Replay, now lists the game as coming out on September 14th, 2017. As always, no one should take this release date as any kind of confirmation until we hear something from Sony. It is a retailer listing. They, well, sometimes they get it right, sometimes they don't. Plus, it might not be best to get your hopes up about this one because September 14th is a Thursday. Typically, games will release on Tuesdays or Fridays, so we'll chalk this up as a rumor for now. Hopefully, we'll get something more definite at E3 and hopefully definitely for this year. Microsoft made a flashy new trailer to show off the Xbox Scorpio dev kit for some reason. Anyway, it looks pretty cool if you're a developer and none of us are, but there's one bit about the dev kit that fans have already taken a real shine to, the front display that shows a current FPS counter. After Windows Central's Jez Corden posted the trailer to Twitter yesterday, several fans in his replies began asking for Microsoft to include the counter on the final retail product. I mean, I guess it'd be cool to brag about your Scorpio run in Sea of Thieves at a whopping 60 frames per second, but you know what? I don't want to kill your dreams. So you can just keep on hoping for that FPS counter. They probably definitely haven't entered production yet and it's definitely not too late. Valve has just changed the gifting process on Steam in a move apparently to crack down on resellers. In an announcement, the company said that Steam gifting will now be a system of direct exchange from gift buyer to gift receiver, and we will be retiring the gift to email and gift to inventory options. Engadget says the move is probably an action to cut down on resellers who buy several copies of a game during sales and then sell them over time. But it's also gonna make it harder to send gifts to other countries. Valve says you won't be Able to send a gift if there's a large difference in price between countries. And according to some NeoGAF forum posters, gifts won't go through if the price difference is 10% or more. So good news if you hate the G2As of the world, bad news if your friend on the other side of the world needs a cheap copy of Stardew Valley because you are not going to be the friend that gives it to them. Could we be getting a remake of Far Cry 3 or a sequel? Far Cry 5? 
Far Cry Blood Dragon 2. Some people noticed recently that Ubisoft's French social media accounts are making an awful lot of references to Far Cry 3, leading many to believe a remake or sequel is on the way. A few days ago, the developer posted an image of the game's island on Instagram with a caption reading, an island that we never really left. Does that remind you of something? And then another post showed Voss from Far Cry 3 with a caption, have I already given you the definition of the word madness? Now, it turns out there is no such remake or sequel in the works. Game Informer got in touch with Ubisoft, who said that it was simply a throwback post, not a tease for anything. So because honestly, I think we could all use more Voss in our lives and we could all definitely use more Blood Dragon. Looks like the Gears of War movie finally has a writer. Shane Salerno, whose credits include Armageddon and Shaft, will write the script for the film, according to Variety. He's also involved in the writing of the Avatar sequels, which you would think would keep him busy for a long time since there are so many of them, but I guess not. A Gears of War movie dates back to 2007 when New Line Cinema purchased the rights to make a movie based on the game. Then. Well, after that, nothing really happened. Finally, last year, Microsoft said that a Gears of War movie was in the works with Universal Pictures, so I guess the rights to the movie changed hands. Maybe they came back to Microsoft and then went back out to Universal. We don't really have a release date or even a director or any other details about this movie project yet, but hey, getting someone to write the damn thing is at least a first step. Marvel's Defenders team up is almost here, and we got our first full trailer for the upcoming Netflix show. Very exciting, if you're me and watched all of the TV shows leading into it. The trailer shows the superhumans meeting each other for the first time as they try and stop an underground group of assassins called The Hand that have popped up throughout their various series. That group has been alluded to in a bunch of the shows so far, more you know, more heavily in some than others, like Daredevil, it was a really big thing. Uh, it was a really big thing in, in, in Iron Fist and so on. Um, and so they've been coming more to the fore. Um, but we got to see the return of Stick from Daredevil, which is very exciting. And of course, he's given the team a bit of tough love speech, which is really his forte when it comes down to it. At the end of the trailer, we see the team come together to kick some bad guy ass in a hallway because every Marvel show has to have a hallway fight. Love hallways, hate doors. The Defenders debuts on Netflix August 18th. Oh man, that feels too far away. I kind of just want it now. Okay, guys. We really need to teach people what the word prank means. This is an important one. This isn't Defenders, this isn't Marvel, this isn't comics, this is pranks in a serious business. A real prank is a funny stunt where no one is put in danger. It's not doing stupid stuff that could get people hurt or killed. And a YouTuber learned that the hard way. Ross Creations thought it would be fun to go around dressed like a construction worker and remove stop signs from his neighborhood. And now he's been charged with third degree felony grand theft and faces up to five years in prison. Now, Ross Creations wants you to help pay the bills for his stupidity because, hey, if you watched it, it's actually your fault. In a new video, he begs for help saying, I don't have much money for legal fees or a lawyer, so your help would be very meaningful to me. Hey, here's a funny prank, dude, dealing with our criminal justice system. See? See? Not, not funny, is it? No. Anyway, he must have either felt ashamed or gotten bailed out by his parents because that video is now gone. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully he won't end up going to, to prison for a long time because that would suck, but don't steal stop signs. How about that? That's, that's the real lesson here. Turns out your buddy really doesn't need you to proofread his resume yesterday. It was a scam. It turns out Google got hit with a massive phishing attack yesterday involving Google Docs, but the company says the bug has now been fixed. The attack involved people getting an email invitation from someone they know asking them to edit a file in Google Docs, but if they clicked on the links, it allowed a third party program to access their email and address book and from there spread it even more, I'm sure. Happily, Google was on the case and apparently had the issue fixed later the same day. In a statement to The Verge, Google said, we have taken action to protect users against an email impersonating Google Docs and have disabled offending accounts. Google estimated that fewer than 0.1% of users were affected by the attack, but still, when you're talking about Google, that's a lot of people. It also told uh, Gmail users that beyond contact information, no other sensitive data would have been gleaned from the attack and no further action is necessary to protect your accounts. Just know that you may be annoying your friends on your contact list. All right, that's all the news we have for you guys today. Let us know what you think of all of these stories in the comments down below. Make sure you like this video so you see all of our news in your feed. And if you're new around here, subscribe to The Know.
Thanks to Sherry's Berries for sponsoring this update. Mother's Day can be kind of stressful if it sneaks up on you, so don't let it get it sorted out now instead. Sherry's Berries is offering freshly dipped strawberries for just $19.99 plus shipping, or you can double the berries for an extra $10, and if you do that, they'll throw in free cake truffles too, which sound delicious. Then you just set an arrival date, and they're guaranteed to arrive fresh and tasty, or your money back. Not bad, right? And they are honestly like really, really good. We get them in the office this time of year and we have to keep them in a separate fridge or they mysteriously go missing and we have to write, do not eat and people eat them anyway. Uh, they've got a bunch of different kinds of dipped berries. There's chocolate chip, chocolate nuts, white chocolate with a nice drizzle on it. My favorite is the dark chocolate. Just, you know, putting that out there. Those are delicious. I'll bet your mom would like them a bunch. Uh, to check them out and order berries for your mom or for yourself because you deserve to treat yourself, uh, visit berries.com, click the microphone in the top right corner and enter code THE NO so they know we sent you over.